GM, GM, everyone, and welcome to episode 103 of Nansen Office Hours. This week, we're joined by Martin, who will teach us how to discover crypto whales using Nansen. We'll also share some of our tips and tricks to find addresses on chain and how you can stay updated with our activity. If at any point you have a question for either me or Martin, send them in the chat and we'll do our best to answer them. But before all that, if you're new to Office Hours, every other Friday, we dive in on chain on Nansen to find interesting alpha, share new features, discuss what's trending and much more. We're going to be ramping up our video content in 2024, so make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so that you don't miss out on any future content. Martin, do you want to introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, hi. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's been a while since I've been on Office Hours. So uh, essentially, I do like content and comms over at Nansen. So a lot of the blogs would have been written by me as well as like a lot of the like how-to guides as well. Uh, that are live on our Nansen blog. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I guess we can get started. Uh, try to take a look at some tokens, interesting wallets and see what we find. Uh, yeah, and I, I think like just like looking at the home screen now, that's like a really interesting signal that I've seen. So uh, like in case you guys are new here or have not tried out Nansen, so signals is basically one of our features which surfaces uh, really, really abnormal spikes in on-chain activity across like various categories. So I think like we have nine categories at this point in time. Uh, and yeah, like typically I filter for like these four specific categories because I personally think they have like the highest alpha. Uh, yeah, and, and one example we have is like right here. So we see that audio, uh, the token for Audius, the uh crypto music streaming platform if i'm not wrong uh it's having like a massive like drop in in the in, in in the holder balances among the top 25 holders uh of over 10 million dollars uh, which is like 111 times the daily average <laughs> which is like insane like i i've never actually really seen like such a large spike in in in, in balance drop no, so, neither. And I, I've seen like yeah. some interesting top balance changes. I think we were saying just before this episode, there was Pendle, which Oscar did a really interesting research article that you should check out on. And that was a top balance change, but 111x the significant. Yeah. And it's quite nice that that signal came in just before Office Hours. I think that's quite a useful <laughs> one to look into. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's a really, really fresh signal. Uh, I haven't really like taken a look at it too much as well. So let's like all take a look together and see what we find. Yeah, so the the signal change was like a large shift in the top holders balances. So what you should do if you want to like check that out is just go to, to like the balances tab for all for for the token. Uh you can kind of already see like really like it's a really clear wallet that's like causing most of the movement. And I think based on the lab label, it's probably like a like an investor vesting contract or something yeah it's it's it, it, it it's probably like where the 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 tokens that will be vested to 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 audios investors are held in uh so it's really interesting to see that there's such a large drop so i i, I haven't taken a look at like the tokenomics or like the vesting schedules but i'm guessing there was an unlock yesterday yeah and, and we can kind of like take a look at the transactions more in, in, in further detail over here. Yeah, and we can kind of see that the audience investors contract is sending out like a huge amount of tokens into quite a lot of fresh wallets, it seems, uh, which is like pretty normal, actually, a lot of like funds, a lot of yeah, like they 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 try to avoid getting docs, so they will. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so 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 they will actually like spin out like fresh wallets, uh, which makes it like really hard for us to like tell who they are. But just like doing like a quick eyeball here, uh, we kind of see like a few of these like wallets have almost immediately send the tokens that they've received to centralized exchanges. So like you can see this particular transaction right here. Uh, received 8.9 million tokens uh, immediately sent into Coinbase. <laughs> so so that's not 
too good. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, like I basically like without like doing any further research, looks like there was like an unlock yesterday. Uh, some some of the recipients have sent it over to centralized exchanges. Uh, so if you are a holder of the token, I would definitely dive deeper. Yeah, like right here we see another one receives the token, sent sends it straight away to Coinbase. <laughs> uh, I think it's the really interesting thing about Signal, especially when it comes to the top balance changes. Often, if it's a, a negative change, so they're either transferring tokens to other addresses or they're selling tokens or moving to an exchange. As we really track on chain data, we don't know what they're doing on Coinbase, but I haven't sent coins to Coinbase or other exchanges to not sell. <laughs> From my personal experience, it might be different for you. But it's really interesting to see that and be able to see this, get the signal in real time, take a quick look at the data. And if this is a token that you hold or you think there is a potential opportunity here to maybe buy in shorter or maybe short, depending on your position, uh, you can do some further research from that, from that signal. So you don't have to spend all that time researching different tokens um, because the signal allows you to surface those unique events quite easily for you. And I think that's that's really exciting. Yeah, yeah. Like it looks like the wallets are mostly like fresh wallets that receive the tokens and yeah, instantly sends it to to Coinbase. So so yeah, unfortunately, because it's a fresh wallet, we don't really have much insights into it. But yeah, just something to like note. And if you are a audio holder, you should definitely keep an eye out. Uh might have like uh, a large increase in selling pressure coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've just got a question. Why don't I see signals directly in the token God mode? Um, I think that's just because on the homepage at the moment, it gives a general overview. Um, but we can definitely relay that feedback about providing signals directly on the token God mode page. If you're searching for a token and you just want to see the insights directly on there, um, we really appreciate that feedback and we can relay that. And that's also important to note that when it comes to office hours, we will just test things. If you've got product feedback, just fire away. Product suggestions, fire away, and we'll open ears because we're trying to build Nansen in public, and this is one of the ways we're doing that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just taking a like quick look at what else I can find on audio, but yeah, it doesn't seem like there's really anything very interesting compared to the potential unlock and and investors immediately transferring it to exchanges. But yeah, since like we are on tokens, I think we can jump into a few other tokens. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure like, I, I, has there been any like tokens which you are looking at, at or <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this, what? show your best. The alpha. Just gonna just share everything that I've been looking into so you guys watching into Office Hours could just <laughs> front run me. Um, <laughs> so there's a few tokens that I've been interested in at the moment. and. As it's on your screen at the moment, Martin, I'll let you yeah. just kind of search them up. So we've noticed there's been some interesting movements in UMA. Uh, Cow has also had some interesting movements. We've touched on Pendle. Unibot, since it's moved over to Solana, has been interesting. Then there's two other tokens, well, three other tokens that I find really interesting. Peas, Butterfly, and Flip. But I think a really interesting token to look into now would be Blur. Um, it's doing really, really well at the moment. One of, the, one of these uh, traders that I track... Um, they have a public uh, trading group that I've just checked into. They're, they're trading below at the moment, and they seem to be doing quite well on that. And I've noticed that over the past month or so, it's been doing relatively well, and there's been a bit of chatter on socials. So maybe there's something there. Yeah, so Blur is like a really interesting uh, token that I've been tracking as well. Like, it's, it, it's clearly showing a lot of strength uh, in the past, like, few weeks like it, it it basically like outperforms if uh but i mean most things outperform if uh <laughs> yeah it, yeah it's it's, it's it's a really interesting like uh if beta play uh, has been doing like really well and like like even a couple of days ago where we saw like a slight like dip in the market blur rebounds like super quickly uh and like one particular thing that i've been like really interested in is uh looking at like 
who's taking blur uh it, it like essentially the only two ways that you can get exposure to blast is either staking blur or uh or depositing your if in the multi sig <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah and and like at least like my point of view like staking blur just seems like like I, I guess it seems like a safer option among the two. Uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, like we can see like the the the, the blur staking contract essentially up only uh, 60 million tokens added in the last like 30 days, 600,000 last 24 hours. But we can kind of take a look at and see like who the top depositors are as well. Uh, yeah, and no surprise here, Machi Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> huh. And yeah, the interesting it, thing is when I, you lock up, it's like Blur as well, you're staking yeah. it, it's, it's not on the market. So it, it just means that, you know, people are thinking much longer term with the token. So if we find that there's significant holdings in that staking contract, that could be something that's very interesting to people who are maybe potentially looking to buy it. Um, it's important to note that Office House is not financial advice. It's just, we're just trying to showcase interesting things we find on chain that allow you to understand how to use Danson for you to do your own research data. Yeah, and, and we actually do see some of them withdrawing tokens after they have staked as well but yeah generally so far uh been a pretty positive trend balance over time yeah it's essentially up only and yeah i like I, i've actually been thinking of like staking blur myself okay uh, then this is probably a good opportunity for us to look yeah. into maybe some big balance holders maybe some non-smart money holders if we're trying to find maybe an interesting blur whale to decide whether or not or how we could evaluate whether or not it's better to stake or just to see what other people were doing. Yeah, let's see what we can find here. Huh. Block tower. Okay. Yeah, so I don't actually like know if block tower is a investor in 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 blur yeah, but it seems like they've been increasing their holdings uh very interestingly like all of the blur that this particular block tower wallet holds comes from wintermute so not sure if it's like a otc deal or or some kind of like arrangement but yeah that's pretty interesting especially if we go back and we can see that they've been acquiring blur over a short time frame normally yeah. when it comes to like investors unlocks it's quite long but yeah it's, it's interesting to see it's, it's been both what 8th of january and 24th of january so yeah that's really interesting to see that they've just only received in the first 17 days and then they're clearly looking to grow in position or maybe it's OTC, we're not too sure, but that, that's something interesting to look into to maybe add that address to your watch list and then decide whether or not um, how to respond based on some of their activity. Are they acquiring? Are they looking to acquire to stake? Are they looking to acquire to put a position to sell later on? That's something that you can do to figure out um, if that's something that you want to be doing to help aid your investing. Yeah. Yeah, and, and another like really interesting like uh widget that we have is the who bought and who sold uh widget. Uh basically like gives you like a really quick overview of the largest like uh wallets that have bought and sold the token over various time frames. Uh yeah, Jared <laughs> from Subway is like you you basically <laughs> see you basically see this wallet across like almost every token. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it's, it's a MEV bot or yeah. something along those lines. So you can more or less ignore it. But yeah, let's take a look at this like, smart dex trader. 
300k to 800k portfolio balance yeah over the past that's not that's not bad that's all mm, yeah so interestingly like it first got into blur in like no end of november but either staked it all or sold it all uh which we can dive into a bit later and has been like reaccumulating it recently so let's just like take a look interesting it's interesting to see as well that biggest token balance was synthetics I, I haven't seen an address that has so much synthetics just just, just as their biggest holding um <laughs> I, I hold synthetics i'm um, personally in currently growing a position um so it's nice to see <laughs> an address grow their portfolio whilst also holding synthetics oh yeah it just seems like it's mostly just been trading the token yeah so not really staking it but but yeah it's a pretty decently sized wallet and again yeah it's probably the case to just yeah. add, add this address to your watch list if this is an address that you're looking into and i think as you said martin when you go to like the who bought who sold this allows you to find interesting addresses straight away so what martin's doing right now is just setting an address to a watch list and then just labeling it just so that whenever there's any blur activity you can easily find that wallet just to see what they're doing and to understand like quickly find that that all its activity yeah okay let's see oh yeah i see we have another comment as well was there a way to somehow catch sabm using nansen uh so personally i can't recall if it ever appeared on our signals or now i'm not sure if you happen to like see anything when the token came out no i haven't seen anything all, all i've seen so far is all the drama that's going on on, on twitter <laughs> about the token um, <laughs> and the back and forth between influencers saying they they referred their friends and stuff or they, they've just been insiders or whatnot so it's been a lot of drama about that um but i i, I, don't, I haven't seen anything specifically on that so about that um so what i'm going to do now is I'm going to show you one of the ways that I find uh, crypto whales. So when I'm on Nansen, one of the things that I like to do is go to the smart money token inflow. And this is on the homepage. And this is something that's available, I believe, to everyone if you search app.nansen.ai. And sometimes when it comes to the big, the first page, uh, when you look into some of the tokens, let's look at uh, LDO, um, a lot of the smart money balance changes are maybe market makers or funds rather than individual addresses. And I find personally that individual addresses are interest, more interesting. So if we go here, it's one to mute trading. So what I do instead, and I think this is a really useful tip if you want to find interesting coins, maybe narratives and stuff like that, is kind of go to the second or third page where the inflow is a, lot, a little bit smaller, but often these are addresses that are doing interesting activity. So we spoke about Pendle earlier today. So let's just take a look here and go to smart money. We can see the price increased a lot. <laughs> um, I don't know if you read the report, Martin, that Oscar did, but I think at the time when he wrote the report, the token was under two dollars. So he's uh, <laughs> timed that 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 article to perfection there, which is really interesting. We can see Ribbon Finance vesting recipient has received some. So let's take a look and see what this address is doing. So they have just bought. So it looks like they're quite building up a position at the moment and they're up uh, 16%. <clears throat> so then we can see that this is an address that's trying to uh, build a position or something. There's an interesting narrative around Pendle. Again, I, th I can link the report at the end of this video. Um, so I think that'd be really useful to look into. But now we know that there's been an interesting smart money address that's been buying or accumulating Pendle. Here's how I find whales that maybe we haven't labeled as smart money. And so what I do with the smart money dashboard that we just shown at the start is just to use that as a, as almost like a, a way to just filter through interesting movements. And then I can do some research on top of that. 
So what we can do here is click on this chart. We can see this chart has literally been up only for the entire year. I don't think I've ever seen a chart look like that, Martin. I don't know, but <laughs> have you seen something like that? Uh, Solana, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Solana, maybe. Yeah, so, so this is definitely doing, is, is really interesting. And so let's just take a look at, so from December, so the last 30 days. So what I'm going to do is go to transactions. And then I'm going to go to here, so Dex trades. And this shows, as the name implies, Dex trades that have happened on the Ethereum network only because I've selected Ethereum here. But what I'm going to do here is filter, and I'm going to look at buys. And then I'm also going to, at the time, and as we go back to the balances tab, I'm going to be looking between the 5th, 16th of December to the 27th of December. So we'll add those that time frame in and you can do a custom time frame which is really really convenient and the reason why i'm going to be looking at this date is one to find addresses that are profitable and have been buying the dip shall we say and then also what i want to do is to see if there's any be any whales accumulating or anything along those lines so we add the time frame we have the action buy and then because i'm only interested in accounts that have made significant size trades um, I'm going to be looking, filtering for a value of over $5,000. From there, we can see all the trades that have happened within this time frame, And I'm going to look at filter via uh, the amount. And as you can see, it's already what we can see here is then the biggest buys that have been made. Again, Jared from Subway at the top. No surprise there, MEV Extractor. But then we can go down a little bit and I'm going to try and find some interesting addresses here. And so I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Sometimes the addresses at the top aren't addresses that you want to look into, maybe because they're MEV extractors and they're in very short time frames. But let's have a look at this address here. And there's nothing there. And we can have to apply the filters again. One thing that we are working on at the moment is to make sure the filters stick um, so that we don't have to uh, constantly add filters, but I think it just shows you how convenient it, it is to add. There's not a problem. And we shall filter for value. We can find some addresses. So again, we go by amount. And we try to find anything interesting here. So go to the second page and I'm going to just press command click and that way I can open up a few tabs at the same time so I can look at those addresses. And I'm also going to look at this address here because you can hover over the addresses that I should have pointed out earlier. You can see how much they have in their balances and then that can be an indication of whether there's an address worth looking into. So we go here. And we can see the address is worth over 600,000. They bought four uh, ETH's worth of Pendle. So maybe they're still holding. And this is interesting. So what we saw is that they purchased Pendle very early on in October. They made uh, another purchase in November. They made an even smaller purchase in December and they sold some of their Pendle the day after. So this shows an interesting accumulation pattern for this the pendle and we see the price continues to increase and if we go up here we can see that they still hold over 100,000 pendle the value of that token of their overall holdings which is 240,000 which relative to their portfolio is significant it's almost half their current price of pendle is $2.45 they first made the purchase in three months and their current cost basis is 95 cent because we saw that they've been accumulating over this time frame so they're up over 157 percent which is really interesting. And they've started to, they started sold last month, but they're still holding. So now I'm interested in this address. And I think this is a while. It's got a significantly high balance. It's buying a token that's narrative driven. I think that's something that we can do. We can explore in a bit deeper to see if they've got anything else that's interesting. We can see that another token they hold, XCAD, they've made over $160,000 worth of profit on. BRA, they've made over $124,000 worth of profit. And the interesting thing is that they currently hold XCAD still. So maybe that's something, if there's a token that I had an interest in, I don't know what it is. Martin, do you know what XCAD is? 
I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Martin has no idea. If you're an ex-CAD follower, supporter, put a message in the comments, tell us what it's all about. But just on the surface, I'm just looking at this address here and I'm going, well, some of the tokens I don't recognize and I'm not that interested in, but the pendle holding is something that I'm interested in. So if I were to say that I'm interested in pendle, whether it's the buy or to sell to short to long or whatever, I may add this address to my watch list or add a smart alert just to see what they're doing um, in the future. Because that way I can kind of go, okay, this address is something that I'm going to be interested in because I want to know what other whales are doing before I make a purchase. Or why I said other whales, I, I wish I was a whale, but I, I, I don't, I'm not. <laughs> Martin, are you a pendle whale? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Like, <laughs> I, 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 like, I've heard about pendle like a while back, uh, but never really like got into it. Like, personally, I'm just like, I'm very iffy about like DeFi projects. Uh, not so much that I don't believe in the project. It's just that because like DeFi is one of like the easier uh, segments for people to actually like act fairly value a protocol. Uh, it or at least like to me like essentially ever since like DeFi summer, we haven't really seen a great like DeFi revive uh DeFi revival. Yeah. Uh, and one of like the reasons why I think we haven't seen that is because of how accurately you can kind of value a DeFi protocol, uh, yeah. which then makes it, which to me then makes the price like kind of converge very closely with its fair value and hence why you don't see like insane movements. So it's kind of why like, I've like faded a lot of DeFi tokens over time, <laughs> but Pendo is proving me wrong <laughs> with an up only chart. Yeah, for sure. And I, I'm also I, I'm also a little bit skeptical at the moment of just like where to position myself. There's so much going on. One of the things that Pendle's doing really well, because I bought Pendle after Oscar's first report, actually, and then it got listed on Coinbase not too long after. So I was like, yep, I've made money. I'm a smart money trader. And then it's, it's more than doubled since. So that that's, that's really interesting to see. I know they're exposed to the whole um, restaking narrative. That's really hot. Um, and so, again, I, I think this is a token to potentially look into in the future and do your own research on. So you just have to go to app.nanton.ai and search and dive into Pendle balance changes. And you can do your own research on that token. And I was looking at other addresses. Um, I want to press command click uh, to see who's holding Pendle. This address is one of the other ones that I've been uh, open to tab up onto. So they accumulated on Christmas. Um, if you're European, you said about Christmas on the 24th. Um, what they were doing instead of spending time with the family was buying Pendle, um, <laughs> each to their own. Um, if they don't celebrate Christmas, then hey ho. And we can see that they've got over 12,000 Pendle. They bought it uh, at a cost basis of just over a dollar. And that's all they've done so far. And they're holding. So imagine just buying it. And it's not even been a month and they've already doubled their money from there. And we're going to go into their, this account here. And this is really interesting. This is an account that has had very little activity. It has one wallet label for DeFi. So it's very under the radar. And this is why I think it's important to use, use the smart money um, inflow and then go to another couple of pages, see what people are doing, and then do your own research because there'll be fresh wallets like this that come through that are very interesting to look into. They hold RAP BTC and they hold Pendle. If we look at their transactions, I'm wondering if they have any interaction with um, Rap BTC for DeFi purposes, or if they're just accumulating Bitcoin on Ethereum. It seems like they're just accumulating Bitcoin on Ethereum, and they are holding. And so far, their portfolio is growing quite significantly, which is really interesting to see. So maybe this is an address where, again, you'd want to add a watch list. As it's your watch list, or maybe you want to set, a, set up a smart alert for you to just kind of keep an eye on that wallet's activity. If they end up accumulating more, if they end up selling, maybe that's an indicator for your own personal research for a token. And again, what applies to Pendle could apply to other tokens. We were going to run through smart alerts today, but Journey, who's our product marketing manager, has told us that there's going to be a really interesting update coming soon 
with smart alerts that we're going to run through in the next episode of office hours in a future episode sorry and in this with smart alerts what they do is they allow you to track addresses in real time so they'll be on telegram you get a notification to say that hey this address has done the thing that you're looking into and there's many examples of how you use it it could be that you're tracking addresses like the one i've just showed you just because you're interested in the tokens that they're holding are you going to accumulate more are you going are they going to sell i need to kind of want i want to understand what they're doing so i can react to that accordingly rather than be late to the narrative and there's so many ways you can use that but we're going to be adding smart alerts for a bunch of different things soon so smart money token flow so you can set a smart alert based on token age and it's very handy to get alerts for when smart money are buying or receiving new tokens so not only can you use the smart money inflow dashboard that i showed earlier but you can use set up a smart money token flow smart alert in the future so you'll know straight away when they make that activity, that token inflow. So you can jump in and do your research straight away and be early without having to research or wait, or, you know, it, it just jump straight, jump straight in. Exchange flows, again, Martin touched on exchange flows earlier today when it came to Audios, Audios and how investors receive tokens and some of them sent to Coinbase. If you hold a token, specific, a specific token, you're seeing a huge inflow. I think you want to know and then also we are looking at setting up smart alerts for signals we don't have a timeline on that yet but i think that's going to be a pretty big alpha leak how are you for time martin shall we look at one more token yeah uh actually like i just remember like there actually is a way that we might have been able to actually catch savm early on but it's actually on Nansen one. Uh, so, <laughs> so like, uh, essentially like the two most useful like widgets that are still on Nansen one that have not yet been, uh, migrated over to Nansen two. Uh, it's actually this hot contracts widget and this guest consumer accounts widget. So, uh, it, essentially what uh like for the hot contracts widget we basically like surface uh contracts that are they are seeing a very large amount of smart money interactions in the last 24 hours uh and 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 over here we clearly see savm appearing with 33 smart money depositors uh into the contract uh i didn't check it early on so i cannot say for sure that the SAVM contract appeared here but if there were a ton of smart money interactions on or, or essentially on the day itself we would have seen it there uh and the other one would be like the guest consumer accounts um widget as well uh essentially like contracts that are getting a lot of traction so we would typically see new token launches, new NFT launches, uh, contracts appear there. And that would have also been another, uh, 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 another widget that might have surfaced the SAVM contract. So uh, while, they are, while they're still on Nansen 1, they're still like super valuable. And from what I understand, we are migrating the hot contracts, dash, uh, the hot contracts widget over soon. Uh, not sure of the of the exact uh timeline but yeah so when we do migrate that over that can be one of the ways where you catch uh essentially new launches that uh or, or essentially like any like contract that is receiving a lot of like smart money attention uh so like savm is one and we also see ondo at the bottom here uh, which is a really popular uh, if I don't real world asset token, yeah. So, so so yeah, just to like circle back and answer that question. Uh, that's a really good point actually. I think that touches on one of the things at the moment. So Nansen two is currently in beta, and we're building in public. One of the reasons we've got office hours, so you can see everything, ask us questions, engage with us, ask the product features and stuff like that. And we are moving stuff from Nansen one to Nansen two. We are building new features out, and we want to make sure that we have a product that works for you. And so. What we see here with the hot contracts is something that we'll move over and there'll be other stuff that we moved over we've, we've put it on priority um but you'll still have access to this if you have a nansen subscription uh, you can use nansen one or you can use nansen two nansen two will have most of the things that we had on nansen one plus a lot of new features like signals 
but then also uh, you can go back to Nantum 1 to find things that haven't migrated over. And hot contract is one of those things that generates so much alpha. Um, I remember uh, seeing hot contracts with avatar, the, the, para, the parallel avatars. Um, and there was an NFT mint on OpenSea that I wasn't paying much attention to. And I saw a lot of smart money coming into it. And I was like, go oh, mint. And I'm messaging someone in our team like, hey, do you know what this is? Minted. And then it ended up doing really well. So it kind of generates alpha for you straight away because you see what smart money is doing. Um, but often when you see hot contracts, you do your research beforehand and just see what's going on, um, just so you can kind of understand the narratives and understand what's actually going on. Because just because something is hot doesn't mean it's it's safe or guaranteed, especially if it's smart money, because it could be a smart money dex trader that could just be aping into the next big meme coin, or it could be a rug. Um, but the point here about hot contracts is just to highlight contracts that are very active and getting a lot of activity in the last 24 hours. Yeah, and yeah, so I'm not sure if we have a bit of time left, but like since we are here to like find and track whales, uh, like we have to talk about the smart money dashboard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so it, it, essentially like this is like our newly like revamped smart money dashboard. Uh, we have a bunch of like new tabs and new and, and, and new data points that are like really really useful. Uh, so like just from like the first like widget you can see, <laughs> SAPM is essentially dominating the the top <laughs> money top trades. Uh, and 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 in terms of like easily finding um really like high alpha wallets because like that's always like the most like valuable thing which you can do over on Nansen. Uh, we've also like made it like a lot easier now. Uh, we have this like table here. Which essentially like shows you the uh, highest ROI traders, uh, in the past like seven days, thirty days, and ninety days. Uh, you can even like toggle if you want to include like if or if you just want to include like the, the the smaller altcoins. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> yeah, and like oh, I yeah, I, I guess we all know what's like the flavor of like the last thirty days is SAVM and oh. Huh peace as well like I, I know you're like really interested at peace which maybe we can take a look at like later after i like quickly just run through this dashboard uh and yeah this like balances tab uh gives you like a really good overview of what's like the largest holdings that smart money wallets are holding uh yeah and we yeah and we can see blur even though it's like not that large in absolute numbers uh yeah it it has increased like quite substantially over like the last 30 days last 24 hours so so yeah blur definitely worth like checking out as well and this is probably like what most people are like really interested in uh it, it's essentially like a leaderboard of like all of our smart money wallets <laughs> with the like the largest balances it, uh, you can kind of see most of them are like funds, uh, no surprise there. But so if, if you just like scroll down a few pages, like that's where things get a lot more interesting. Uh, okay, it's taking a bit of time to. Read. Yeah, when you talk about the smart money dashboard, why we wait for that to load up? Um, yeah. The P's is one of these tokens that I saw on Nansen in the smart money dashboard that's been doing really, really well. I haven't researched enough into it, but I've noticed that there's been a lot of chatter on socials again for this token. There's one a few interesting addresses on there that are currently trading P's. Um, and the token again is, as we looked at the Pendle chart earlier, the P's chart looks, is it is ridiculous. <laughs> it makes Pendle look like nothing, which is which is crazy, especially in the, at the moment. But, but yeah, so like, it, it just like going on to like the next tab, you, you kind of see like slightly more like individual like wallets where this like airdrop pro uh which is essentially like a wallet that has done really really well on the airdrop front which is definitely like worth following especially this year if the market continues to like trend up more projects will like do airdrops uh and it's definitely like a way for you to like grow your portfolio uh especially if you're like a smaller account uh airdrops is like a it, it is it's a pretty good way for you to like um, grow your portfolio size 
while holding like certain tokens or like staking certain tokens that you might already like want to hold anyway. So so yeah, Airdrop Pro is is potentially like the highest alpha level for <laughs> this year, maybe. Yeah, not financial <laughs> advice, but yeah, just like a, throwing out like a quick prediction there. Yeah, for sure. I definitely agree with you on that. And then maybe when we do the episode on the new smart alerts, we can probably dive into just Airdrop Pro as, as a label and how you can kind of track Airdrop Pros in real time to see what they're doing. Um, yeah, there, there's a few interesting things that I've noticed with some Airdrop activity at the moment, especially with some interesting dApps that may have gone under the radar. Um, so we'll see how that goes first. Um, and then we can share that in the smart alert like episode maybe. Because I think, yeah, as you say, there's a lot of alpha there. Um, and I think that label is something that I think people will really enjoy exploring because you don't have to rely on a Twitter threader. You know, you can go, just, just go into Nansen, find your airdrop pros. What are they doing? <laughs> Get out of the threads, cut out the referral links and go straight in. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, like, while a lot of like, a lot of crypto Twitter is like really high alpha. There's like no better way than finding your own alpha uh and like diving into the chain seeing what's happening surfacing like interesting insights that that matter to you across like tokens that you care about and yeah like like you can even like see like live deck trades for smart money down here uh won't go like too much into it uh olas is a is a interesting token uh that we actually like stumbled upon during our nansen 2 GA live stream. <laughs> yeah, back then when when we did find it, it was like two it was like two two sixty or something. Uh yeah, it's it's done like really, really well since uh it's it's done quite a bit from from where it was, but yeah, it's still like up like eighty percent from the time that we first like discovered it on stream. Yeah, and I think yeah. we should just go with it on stream via a signal as well. So again, picking up those unique on-chain insights and stuff like that, it, 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 it just helps generate alpha straight away. You, like, you just like print up Nansen and then you can see those signals come through and then you can do your research and it could be early to certain narratives and stuff. Yeah, and like I and I, I would say that like you, when you come on Nansen, you should like really focus on the slightly smaller cap tokens or like small to like medium cap tokens uh, especially if they haven't been listed on a centralized exchange yet because like once a token is on a sex you essentially lose a lot of visibility uh and hence like the, the alpha kind of like drops but for tokens like olas or like peas uh yeah like there's like where majority of the trading happens on chain like that's 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 like really really where you can find like the highest amount of alpha where you can really get a very accurate and complete view of what's happening to that token who's buying who's selling who's trading and and yeah like and small and medium cap tokens are also likely the ones that like really do like insane amount of like returns it's like pendo for example i know they're listed on binance but yeah, like it, it Panda is probably like like five, ten X maybe. I'm not sure, like over like the past year. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. And I, I think you make a really good point there about using the benefits of the coins that aren't necessarily listed on exchanges yet or the major exchanges right away. That that there's a lot of gold there. So maybe we could do an office hours episode on there of just looking at low to medium cap tokens and just figuring out what's going on, what's the activity. And maybe just kind of giving you guys insights into what's just going on. Um, I think that makes for a future episode, and I think it'll make a lot of, be a lot of fun actually. Because if we're going live and just seeing what's going on, you know, it, it, we could find some really interesting alpha, like we do with Olas. Maybe we'll find something else. Um, and I think given the time, it's been what forty-five minutes now. I think uh, we've run over just a bit <laughs> to what was planned. But I think that's the first episode of Hash Track Crypto Wales. I think we can do a lot more on this subject, just showcasing some of our tips, setting up smart alerts, doing more different research flows, how you can use filters, how you can make Nansen really work for you. Um, so you can find those whales to find those accounts, maybe some of those accounts that aren't labeled like that Pendle address earlier. Um, if there's anything that you want to do, explore Nansen, just go to app.nansen.ai. 
we've improved the free product significantly with Nansen 2. So you don't even need an account, you can go straight in. Labels will be slightly limited, as will smart money, but you can still do an awful lot of research and find a lot of alpha. And then you can also get a Pioneer subscription as well from there. If you have any questions, send them in the comments after and we'll be happy to answer them. And if there's anything, any feedback or more, please let us know. And if you enjoyed this, please make sure you give this stream a like. Thank you very much for tuning in to Office Hours and we'll see you in two weeks.